Warning. This post contains graphic details of child abuse. The evening of June 6, 1947 started out like any other for Marion Sillick, a nursing student at Massillon, Ohio City Hospital. Stationed on the fourth floor, Marion was one of two night nurses tasked with keeping watch over the hospital's pediatric ward, including the nursery. At 7.35 p.m., Marion checked on the nursery's sole occupants, nine-week-old Rosemary Morton, and eight-week-old Diane Brand, finding them fast asleep. Ten minutes later, Marion again returned to the nursery. This time, as she approached the cribs that held the two infants, she was met with a startling scene, the two babies lay dying in their cribs, suffering from obvious head wounds. Marion quickly summoned help, but sadly despite the hospital's best attempts to save them, both infants succumbed to their devastating injuries. Rosemary Morton had been admitted to the hospital on May 19, after her parents, Evelyn and Harry Morton, grew concerned with her eating habits and lack of weight gain. It was also revealed that Rosemary had a condition that caused her to have a webbed foot and hand, however the condition was not considered a threat to Rosemary's health. Diane Brand, the first child of Edna and Leo Brand, had been admitted to the hospital four days prior to undergo surgery to correct an abdominal abnormality. Although the operation had been a success, doctors told the Brands to be on standby for a blood transfusion if necessary. When Leo and Edna were summoned to the hospital, Leo went under the pretense that Diane may need blood. However when he arrived, the hospital staff delivered the devastating news to him. Rosemary was pronounced dead at 9.02 p.m., and Diane at 10.10 p.m. Aside from both suffering multiple skull fractures which resulted in catastrophic brain hemorrhages, fingernail marks were found around both infants' lower abdomens and sides, and their diapers had been pulled down to their ankles. It was also noted that dirt smudges were found on the face and head of Diane. It was immediately theorized that the injuries inflicted upon the infants may have been the result of being held by their lower extremities and swung into the ground or nearby wall with brute force. Both of their deaths were determined to be due to blunt force trauma. No significant evidence was found at the scene, however it was revealed the person responsible may have used any one of four possible routes to gain access to the fourth floor, a self-operated elevator, two stairwells, or an outside fire escape. Questioning began immediately, however with a limited night staff, and heavy restrictions on visitors, police were left with few suspects. While all hospital employees were interviewed, investigators focused the majority of their attention on the fourth floor staff. That evening, there were only two student nurses, and one nurse's aide working on the floor, Marion, who had made the discovery, Myrna Croft, who was also a nursing student, and an unidentified female nurse's aide. All three denied having any knowledge of the crime, however upon a second inspection of the nursery, Marion did notice that the bedding from a third crib had been ripped away as though searched by someone. It was also noted that a strange doll, never before seen by staff nor the parents of the victims, had been discovered sitting on a chair near the cribs. Although Rosemary and Diane were the sole occupants of the pediatric nursery, they were not the only patients housed on the fourth floor. Just down the hallway was the hospital's maternity nursery. That evening 16 babies were in the nursery, thankfully they were found undisturbed. However also on the floor, right next door to the nursery, were eight older pediatric patients ranging in age between 4 and 12. Police began questioning the young patients, and while most of the kids denied having any knowledge of the crime, one patient, six-year-old Roger Gu, claimed to have seen something significant. Roger told police he had witnessed a young man, around 15 years old and dressed in a white coat, enter the nursery just after 7.35 p.m. According to Roger, he watched as the boy slammed the babies on the floor and then returned them to their cribs, before dashing out of the room and heading towards the elevator. News of the tragedy had made headlines, and with Roger's new added lead, reporters flocked to the town in the hopes of getting an interview with him. It was during one of these interviews that Roger suddenly presented a shocking solution to the mystery, he had accidentally dropped the infants while attempting to play nurse with them. According to him, after dropping the infants, he heard Nurse Marion coming down the hallway. He claimed he quickly returned the injured babies to their beds and ran back to his wheelchair he had left sitting in the hallway, before then returning to his room.